I made the decision to let my hair be gray, its natural color, about a year ago. It's been less than a year. It's really been about 10 months since I had it done, but I thought I'd show you a little bit about my journey and see if I can help you in your journey because, wow, gray hair is a big step. Um, Real quick, here is how I did it. I did document everything here on YouTube, so you can look back at all these, at a bunch of videos, and I'll drop some links down below in the com in the uh, description for you. My hair was really thrashed, had to be cut off anyway. So I cut it super short, as in shaved on the sides. And I bleached it out white. Then I put a toner on it. I used Manic Panic. This is not the shade that I used. I do not have any more of the shade that I used. When I first used the Manic Panic, I used it in the Virgin Snow color, and that brought me to a very white white. I enjoyed the white blonde for about a month, month and a half, and then I wanted more of a silver color. I used the Manic Panic Blue Steel that I mixed with this, this is what I have left, the Pastelizer. You can also use hair conditioner, but I think it holds a little bit better with the Pastelizer. So documented that, you can see those videos. So that was what I did. I used the Manic Panic three separate times on my hair. Slight differences in uh, the mix and where I placed it each time, just sort of experimenting. So I had white hair and then just allowed the gray to grow in. Because I had been chasing that white stripe on the top of my head with hair dye for many, many years, I imagined that my hair was completely white because that's what I kept seeing on the top. It looked completely white. I didn't know that I had a lot of dark tones in there, so that was a pleasant surprise. We all gray in our own individual way. It is completely unique. I guess you can't really say completely unique. If it's unique, it is unique. You don't need a qualifier. Anyway, um, so when you are going gray, know that this is 100% you and nobody else has a pattern of gray in their hair just like yours and the hair is not truly gray it is a mixture of hair that has lost its pigment and is white with whatever your natural color is or was uh, so you can see I was a dirty blonde and I've got more white up here and my dirty blonde mixed with white made a sort of a pewter color so embrace your individuality. That is, that is what your gray is. And I think that's wonderful that your gray comes at a time in your life when you're really starting to feel really much more comfortable with yourself than you ever did in your 20s and 30s. Uh, you're just, the gray comes and, and you're, you can. You're, you're now that person who can embrace that individuality. Anyway, that's going off on a whole other tangent. Uh, going on with the practical, uh, dealing with the color as it was coming in, gray hair does tend to yellow. So I have used a number of things to work with that yellow, to get rid of that yellow, to improve the color of the gray, and I'll share all those different things with you. This is by far my favorite item. When I first dyed my hair white and then to silver, it didn't quite look natural. It was maybe natural, maybe not. It was a little weird. And I kind of liked having that little bit of a lavendery tone. It felt a little, like a little bit edgy and I didn't quite feel old lady with it. Of course, I also had shaved sides, so that was a bit of an extreme look. So I kind of liked that little bit of a lavender, but as the natural gray has come in more, and I 
relied less on what I bleached. I still have about this much on the ends that is from what I bleached. I didn't like the purpley so much. I did at first, but later, not so much. So I liked the purple tones for about, I'd say the first six months, and now in the second six months, I don't. The Agora Absolute Silver White really gives it a silver color. It gets rid of the yellow. It makes the white white without giving it any sort of a purple cast. So this I use about once every three weeks. It is a, I wash my hair. Usually I use a clarifying shampoo. I wash it, you know, get rid of all the buildup of gunk throughout the month. Don't put conditioner on it, towel dry. Spray this on. Leave it on for about half an hour, it says on the bottle, and I, I did a video, so you, you can refer to that, so. Uh, specifics, I'm not sure off the top of my head. But this I really, really like for keeping the silver looking really silver, about once every three to four weeks. Somebody sent me this to try uh, via Natural Living Colors. This is a toner. This particular uh, one, they said it needed to be processed with heat. I did not have heat to process it. I still got plenty of color out of this. This made my hair a very, very purpley steel color. I did not shoot a video for this. Uh, it was a fun color and I probably would have liked it more had I done it in that first six month. I tried it like a month and a half ago, a month ago, and, and I didn't love it, but it has that little bit of a purpley tone to it. As you can see, it's quite purple. So there are a number of purple toners that you can try and experiment with, and there is going to be an experimental process because it's individual and it's what your own preference is you may like a little bit more of a lavender tone in your hair. You may not like a little bit of a lavender tone in your hair. You don't know what exactly you like until you play with it, and nobody else can tell you exactly what you like. You're gonna have to discover that for yourself, but I think that's part of the fun, part of the journey. This is another type of toner. I have this for using on my eyebrows as I'm in search of the perfect pewter eyebrow, have not found it yet. Uh, I have not yet used this on my hair. I don't know if I will use this on my hair because I'm happy with the tones in my hair color and I don't want to alter them. However, I just want you to be aware that there are products. This is a T14 toner by Wella. Every color line is starting to have silver colors in their line, in their toners. So look for them when you go to the beauty supply. These are things that you can really ask for. And it may, you know, you may have to prod a little get, to get that info because they're not used to it. It's kind of new, but lots of silver toners on the market right now. You can manipulate your hair color if you just want to tint it a little bit less silver, a little bit more silver, a little bit more lavender. You can tweak it a little with toners. This is a shine spray. There are a lot of shine sprays on the market. You can see it is violet in tone. This, um, I have very, very fine hair, so I have to be careful about using shine sprays because they weigh it down too much. For people who have more coarse hair or dry hair, this could be really fun. It does give a ever, ever, ever so slight cast of this color on it, which makes your yellow, you know, the yellow in your white hair look less yellow. So it does brighten it. It makes it more of a bright white rather than a yellowy. Purple shampoos. I recommend purple shampoos for gray hair. I recommend purple shampoos for blonde hair. I used a lot of purple shampoos when I had blonde hair but definitely for gray and for white hair. Purple shampoos, I don't use them daily, but every couple of shampoos, I am, I am using them. Now, it depends on 
the shampoo. I've used a number of them. This is one AG Hair Cosmetics. This was on the sale on the clearance rack at Ulta and I got this great big bottle for I have no idea what price, but that's the reason why I own this. This one was a sterling silver shampoo, toning shampoo, and I bought this a couple of years ago when my hair was blonde, and so I've used it. I've used most of the bottle up. In fact, I refilled it with something else, but this is one that I have used and that I thought did a pretty good job. The number one purple shampoo that you are gonna see around, you can usually find it at a grocery store or a drugstore, at Walmart, at Target, lots of different places. Sally's definitely has it. Most of your beauty supplies will have it. Shimmer Lights. This is an, an inexpensive shampoo that does a really good job on keeping yellow tones out of gray hair and keeping it a nice bright white. This is better. This is my favorite one. It's Schwarzkopf. Uh, you can't tell that because in the shower most of the letters have come off. Uh, it's BC, BC Bonacure tre Hair Treatment Color Freeze Silver Shampoo. If I leave this on my hair for five minutes, my hair has a lavender tone. If I leave this on my hair for five minutes, it really doesn't make a difference. So I have two full bottles. I have both of these in my house. So I, I use this one more because I use a number of other shampoos, uh, thickening shampoos, shampoos for growing hair in, you know, I've got a number of products that I bounce around in between. Uh, but purple shampoos, there are a lot Feel free to experiment with them. Find out what your favorite is. You really, really can keep your gray hair looking pretty with purple shampoos. The grow out. The grow out is the way that most women choose to go gray. And the grow out, I've never done it. I've never done the grow out. I, I think the grow out has to be the most difficult way to go gray. I, I had to cut my hair off anyway, it was thrashed. So for me, cut it all off, bleach it, go that route, that was fine because it was done, it was tired, it was toast. If I had hair down in the middle of my back and it was thick and beautiful, hell no I wouldn't cut it. You bet I would do the grow out. Absolutely. So that's why most women are going to do the grow out. And the reason the grow out is tough, your hair grows at roughly half an inch a month. So in one month from your part, you will have one inch because you'll have half an inch here, half an inch here. So you'll see one inch. And then the next month, it'll be three inches. Math is not my strong suit. We're gonna stop right there. You get my idea. It's just gonna take a while. <laughs> hey, I'm a natural blonde, what do you want? Uh, it's gonna take a while for that white stripe to get wider and wider and wider. And I have been growing my hair. I've had, the last time I had it trimmed was the end of March. So it's been quite a few months. Um, you can see. This is how long it's been in a year. It's taken me a year. So if I were doing the grow out in one year, you'd have your dark part, your dyed part here. And so that's, it requires a huge amount of patience. It's, it's a long time of looking in the mirror and not feeling as pretty as you would like. Um, I am so happy with the gray hair, so I, I can imagine that frustration of looking in the mirror and going, what's this other stuff? Why is it? So eventually you can put it back, put it up. I think it's a great idea to play with that colored bit. Do one of the Manic Panic Crazy colors. Do, do them. Get it as bright a pink or a purple or bright blue as you can. Um, 
admittedly, you know, color on color adds color and it's going to influence the color of whatever you're doing. Obviously, if I were going to put purple dye on this white hair, it's going to be exactly the vivid purple. If I put purple dye on brown hair, it's going to have that brown undertone. It's not going to be that vivid purple. But see about, I think it's kind of fun and it, it shows people that you're doing something that's very unique and it would certainly help you keep from feeling dowdy. That is the number one complaint that women have when they are doing the grow out, that they just feel dowdy, that they feel like they've got half gray and half brown and they feel kind of drab because it's not really going any direction. Uh, so just stick with it. There are, it's a tough thing. I couldn't do it. I had to just do it all at once. But other women, you know, if you've got long, beautiful hair, you don't want to get rid of it. And you know, so scarves. Scarves are a great way to cover up that line, to draw the eye towards something bright, something pretty. Color. With gray hair, color has become so hugely important. And color, bringing more color into your world will keep you from feeling drab. And you can bring color in, start wearing, you know, this is something I picked up in a, a vintage store. Start wearing things that, you know, put something on that's got a bold color. See, this is why I wore neutrals today, so I could show you bright colors. You know, having, having a bold piece of jewelry on will draw the eye towards that and keep you from feeling like that drab, brown, gray little sparrow. Bright colored earrings, that is going to help you. Tie it in with your lipstick. If you can have color in, if you can repeat a color, that really draws the eye and focuses it on that color. Anybody who has watched my videos knows that I'm a little neurotic about color. Okay, I'm a lot neurotic about color. Scarves are a good way to cover up as you are transitioning from whatever you've been dyeing your hair to gray. Uh, hats are another way. Uh, I strongly encourage you to find a style of hat that you like and use that to brighten up your wardrobe. When you start bringing in colors that all match, it really draws the eye and changes the focus and people won't really notice that awkward transition that you're going through. It will, you'll still have style. You don't have to feel drab. Um, the number one thing that people keep telling me is they just don't feel pretty. Feeling pretty matters. You want, you want to feel pretty. And feeling pretty has nothing to do with actually being pretty. Um, it's, you know, it's a feeling. There's sometimes you just, you feel pretty. And there's times when you don't. And, and it matters. You want to feel attractive. Even if it's even if nobody looks at you but you, if you don't even walk out of the house, you want to look in the mirror and you want to like what you see in the mirror. That's the most important thing. Dealing with significant others. They may not always be that supportive. Sometimes, as I've said before, the people who are closest to you will say the harshest things to you. People will say things meaning it in such a caring, loving way. And, oh boy, is it hard. It really is hard. But you will have strangers come up to you and give you the most wonderful compliments. And that will keep you going. That It really, really will. But yeah, your daughter's gonna tell you you look old because 
Your having gray hair makes her feel old. Your husband will tell you that your gray hair makes you look old because your gray hair makes him feel old. The criticisms that people will have about your hair have more to do with them than they do with you. So just stay strong. Stay strong, say thank you for your opinion. I, I think this is right for me. And hey, if I don't like it, I can always die back. I can always go back to it. Uh, ways to get through. I have used, these are things that I have used throughout my acting career with camouflage with wigs. Uh, I've been camouflaging with, and with wigs is a whole other video. We're not even going there. Um, camouflaging and blending that gray hair on that, that line, that will help. Rue Fanciful has a number of products. I haven't even tried this yet. This is a clear toner. I just grabbed it thinking it was something else. Um, Rue Fanciful has a, a line that has been around forever. And I've done a couple of videos where I've shown you what they look like on the whole head. I don't have the whole color selection of theirs. Um, I don't see any reason to, but these are things that I've picked up. Uh, they don't, they don't have as much color as they look like on the bottles. So just keep in mind that if your hair is black and you want to cover it up with one of these, and it's not going to look black. It's really not. There are a bunch of powders on the market. There are powders that you can use to cover up the line, like, like, or you can use eyeshadow. I don't have any of the powders. I can't personally recommend them because I did not use that method going to gray. I did my method, but I know that some of the people watching this do have experience with the powders and have used them and know which ones work and which ones don't. And I am please asking you ladies who have experience with those powders to drop a little info in the comments down below so that those who are following behind or just getting started on their journey, can it can be a little bit easier for them because it's, it's a toughie as we know. But I think you can get nice, nice blonde tones. If you were somebody who dyed your hair a blonde color to camouflage your gray and you're now letting the gray come in. I think the Rue Fanciful line has a lot of shades of blonde. So play around with them, go to your beauty supply, talk to them, see what they recommend. For blondes, it's gonna be a little easier doing that, that grow out. Eyeshadow. I, I, eyeshadow works great. These are sprays. I have used these in a couple of my wig videos. They're like spray paint, but with a super fine tip. I don't know if... And they go on like spray paint, but with that super fine tip, you can get real precision in there. They, um, if you brush against them, they, you know, comes off when it's wet. You want to wait for it to dry. It, it gets kind of hard. Um, but these are handy if you have, if you have hair that only needs to be washed once a week. I hate you already. <laughs> I have to have wash my hair every day. If you have hair that needs to be washed once a week and you don't mind having a dirty pillowcase or having, you know, swapping out your pillowcase or using dark pillowcases on a regular basis, these might really work to get you through that transition period. I was at a networking thing uh, this weekend, spent a couple of evenings there and talked to a lot of men and discovered something interesting. Men who were attracted to me and flirting with me and you know, that thing, refused to believe that my hair was gray. 
I would say, well, you know, when my hair went gray, they'd say, your hair's not gray, it's platinum. No, it's gray. No, it's platinum. It was a really interesting thing to observe. Like, they couldn't like a woman who had gray hair. They, they needed to call it platinum because that was somehow okay. Now, I'm sorry, but platinum and white gold and silver kind of all look pretty close to the same. Uh, they're, they're, they're all the same shade. They're, there's no yellow in there at all. <laughs> so I just thought that was really interesting how the people around you are going to be harsh about your hair color sometimes, not because it doesn't look good on you, but because they don't think it looks good on them. So be gentle with them, even as they say hurtful things to you. Um, it's a big emotional journey going gray. I talk to a lot of actresses and they look at me with such envy and they say, oh, I really wanna do it, but I just can't. I just can't let people perceive me in that way. I'm not ready to go there. And that's true. Not everyone is ready to go there. Some of you will start the journey to gray and you will get about to here and you may go, yeah, that might be natural, but I don't like it. If you decide you don't like it and it's not right because you think you need to have a different color, then you go right ahead and have a different color because you need to please you. You need to feel good about you. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. If natural comes in and you don't like it, get rid of it. If natural comes in and other people don't like it, you have to weigh out your choices. Are you going to color your hair for somebody else? D is it? Does their happiness matter that much to you? I'm not saying that's wrong. If it does, I mean, if it matters that much to them, and not enough, to, you know, you you could do that. Uh, significant others are significant. Their opinion matters. And, you know, if you feel that's impacting your relationship, then by all means. Um, it's just really tough. And, and it takes a strong, strong woman to survive it, to go through it, especially women doing the grow out. I, I think that's the hardest way to go gray. And I'm just like, when I see you, I am like, oh my God, you are the strongest woman around. So women who are doing the grow out, whatever stage you're at, know that that is a visible symbol of your strength and your fortitude and your willingness to stick through something and kudos to you. And if you're still at the one inch stripe, you know, that one inch stripe becoming the two inch stripe, this gets you through a lot of days. It's when you look in the mirror and you see it and you're only a month in and you're like, screw it, I'm gonna dye my hair. And then you hate it and you're like, ah, oh, and you go through that again. So this really helps you get through it. These really help you get through it. Forgot to tell you, somebody wrote after I did a video on this, uh, put it into a spray bottle. I think that is a brilliant idea and put this in a spray bottle trying to think if I have anything else to say. I know as soon as I stop the camera and I put everything away and I sit down to edit, all those ideas are gonna come into my head. Um, oh, I'll just show off. Okay, so, uh, I'll put, I'll put a graphic right here or right here, I'm not sure where it'll be, but I'll put a picture of me with when I first cut my hair I think it's, let's see, when I do it on the phone, I think it's right here. So, oh look, there's when I first did my hair and I cut it all off and shaved it on the sides 
and bleached it out white and put my toner on it. And here I am almost a year later. My hair is naturally curly in the back. I throw some hot rollers in it, uh, in the front, on the top, and then I just run my fingers through it because it's, it's gonna do what it wants to anyway, and that's just, I'm lazy and it's quick. All of these glasses, I have some really awesome glasses. I can't put the pink ones on right now, again, because I did that earlier, and I know when I edit this, I'm gonna see those pink glasses with this lipstick and I will be offended, but you can play with, these are just my readers. So these are my readers that, well, I need them to, to read. I get them at the Dollar Tree, they're a dollar each and they are an awesome accessory. So that is something to consider if you wanna bring some color into your world, you can easily put on a pair of glasses, a pair of earrings that match. You are styled. Um, consider all shades of gray. They're all going to color coordinate with your hair and enhance your hair. Something I did recently, never have I worn white. I never wore white. It was a terrible color on me. And suddenly with the white in my hair, I'm able to wear white. I still don't think it's my best color, but it's kind of nice. Um, color is your friend. Enjoy all the different colors of the rainbow. I have really been experimenting with colors since going gray. At first, I thought that gray was limiting. Gray is not limiting. Gray, silver, pewter, they're such wonderful neutrals. They open up the whole world of possibilities. I really want to explore purples. I don't own any purples. And I think, I, mean, I think like I've got one purple dress, two purple dresses, and you've seen them both. Uh, so purples are something that when I'm shopping this autumn, I'm going to be looking at purples because that's going to be terrific with gray hair. The only thing that's really not exciting with gray hair are the really, the browns, uh, beiges. Beige is really, really boring with the gray hair. So your color palette may change a little bit. Um, I have gotten rid of most of the browns in my wardrobe. Red is a real favorite now. I wear red lipstick. That is a fun change. I still don't own much in the way of red clothes. I have one red dress and I have one red shirt. Blues and greens. You know, you can start, you can see how you can really easily, which one's gonna be better with this? You know, with the gray, it's such a neutral you can make it pop very, very easily. So don't feel that because you have gray hair, you need to be drab. You are not drab. You are wonderful. And I believe I have rambled on long enough. One of the things that I'm trying to do is represent women with gray hair in the media because there really aren't any. You only see women on TV with gray hair when they are in the AARP commercial. You don't see any women who are sexual with gray hair. You don't see women with gray hair being celebrated as sexy or vibrant or alive. They are old and feeble and geriatric. That is how women with gray hair are portrayed in the media. And so I am trying to make it as an actress in LA. I am going on auditions. I am 
being seen. I've been in the business for 26 years, but I've only had gray hair for one. And I'll tell you, it's different and it's hard. And I know how much I worked when I dyed my hair red. And I know how much I would be working if I dyed my hair any color but gray. But I'm still young. I'm very fit and I can represent silver haired women as being vibrant and alive and in a few years I won't be able to. In a few years I'll start looking a little more matronly. So I want to take advantage of it now. I want to do what I can right now and see if, you know, if we can get one gray haired woman on a TV series. What, who's not the old lady. Uh, get one gray-haired woman on a movie or a commercial who's not playing the little old lady, but who's just a regular person living her life, who is vibrant and alive and anything but on her last legs. You know what I'm saying? So that is what I am doing. While I am making these YouTube videos so that I can, I can show you what I'm learning. I grope my way through. I'm not an expert. I clearly tell you I'm not an expert. If you've seen me apply makeup, you know I'm not an expert. But I got gray hair and I'm vibrant and alive. And I'm showing that in my career and I'm showing that here on YouTube. And I know you are showing that to the world every single day and I want to encourage you to keep on doing it. Now what do I have to say? What shall my next tangent be? I got nothing. I'm done. So wherever you're at in your gray journey, whether you're still thinking about it, whether you've got one inch on the top of your head, whether you've got two inches. I don't do math, so whatever that is. <laughs> Wherever you're at in your gray journey, just keep owning it. Just you can do this, you can get through it. If you don't like the shade of gray that is coming in on your hair, but you still think gray is right for you, manipulate it. Use these, these tips that I've shown you, these things where you might want to skew it a little bit more silver or a little bit more lavender. Feel free to, it's your gray. It doesn't have to be 100% natural. It can be whatever you want it to be. You can have your gray and then throw bright turquoise stripes in it. It's yours. Own it. Enjoy it. Relish it. Because we only get one life. And ultimately, how much does our freaking hair color matter that much? I mean, it's just hair. Enjoy your life. Enjoy who you are. Okay, I'm rambly. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave your comments down below. Those of you who are using the hair powders, especially, please, because I don't know, I know they're out there, I don't know which ones are awesome, and I, I want you to help share that so people can find them. And, you know, I don't, I don't have the best advice in the world because I'm just living it. I'm just living my life, and I know what I did, and I know what works for me. And you're on this journey, but you're not alone. We're all here for you. We've got a wonderful community, and I love you bunches. Have a great day.